Good evening, friends, and welcome to Evening Prayer with the people of Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. I'm Reverend Bob Fillier, and it's a pleasure to welcome you into this experience where we can acknowledge everything that's happened today, the good, the bad, the in-between, the things that have brought tears to our eyes and smiles to our faces, and all of the moments that have simply been. One of the things I've noticed as we continue to move through this pandemic tide is people seem to be wrestling more and more with the question, where is God in the midst of all of this? Is God really in control? Who's in control, if not God? Is, is God still holding our lives in the palms of loving and caring hands? And if that is true, then how do you reconcile some of the events of 2020, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, with our belief, our faith, our theology? It's a question that isn't new, of course. People have been wrestling with who God is and what God's role is in creation ever since we started to understand that there was something bigger than all of us, imbued in creation, manifested in creation, reflected in our diversity. That holy mystery we talk about as our song of faith in the United Church of Canada. In order to start to understand where God is in the midst of all of that, I think you first have to start with how do you understand God in the first place? I think how you understand God has a significant impact on the actions you believe to be divine in nature. One of the pieces I came across last week was a poem entitled God by a poet named Jeffrey McDaniel. He was reciting this poem at a Split the Rock a gathering when you could still do that. I believe it was 2018 or 2019. As a way of entering this conversation and then leading us into prayer, I invite you to listen to the poem that Jeffrey McDaniel wrote, God, and see what resonates with you, what questions it might stir for you. What are the pieces where you're going, yeah, that, that's what I believe too. And as well, the parts that are like, I can't go there, I, that doesn't jive with my understanding of God. So let's sit back, listen, and reflect. Here's Jeffrey McDaniel and his poem, God. Please welcome Mr. Jeffrey McDaniel. The first God I remember was a Santa Claus God who you only turned to around Christmas time, who you tried to butter up and then got mad at if you didn't get what you wanted. That didn't make sense. I knew if there was a God, he could see through us like we were made out of cellophane, like he could stare directly into our hearts the way we look into an aquarium like he'd know it was floating around in there, like he might be the one feeding it. Then there were those people who used God to threaten you, saying you better be careful, God's watching, like God was a badass hillbilly sitting in some cloud with a pair of binoculars, a cotton candy beard, a six pack, and a shotgun. <laughs> then I saw people who had Jesus' name on their bumper sticker like he was running for president. And sometimes those people with Jesus on their bumper sticker would cut you off on the freeway and give you the finger, <laughs> which is very different from lending you a hand. Then there were people on television dressed in weird clothes and scary makeup, swearing they had the secret to God, like, 
like God was a keyhole and their, their eyeball was pressed to it. And if I just gave them some money, they'd let me look. <laughs> and then I could see God just hanging around in his boxer shorts. And, and though I liked the idea of spying on God, I began to wonder if the world would be a healthier place if the Romans had just put up with Jesus and let him die of old age. And then there were the football players kneeling down in front of everybody, thanking God like he was their best friend. But then they would jump up and spike the ball and yell, I'm number one. And I'd be confused because if you're number one, then what number is God? <laughs> then I saw politicians trotting God out on a leash like a racehorse they wanted to hop on and ride to the finish line. But if they lost, it would be God's fault and then God would be the donkey they'd pin all their problems on. That was very nice of God to be both a racehorse and a donkey. And then there were those who said, you better be good on earth if you want to get into heaven like heaven was United States, and earth was Mexico, <laughs> and the angels were border patrol. <laughs> like when you die, you sit in a parked car on the outskirts of ev heaven, the engine idling, your soul in the back seat in one of those kennels used to carry small dogs on airplanes. As you listen on the radio to all the people you ever wronged testify against you. And then there was the church, which was like this cafeteria where they serve God to you. But on these very ungodlike plates, I wanted my God pure, not watered down by human beings. So I just had one of those catastrophe gods, you know, the one you only turn to in an emergency, like God is the national guard you call in to clean up the earthquake of your life. So I got drunk one night, drove home, passed out behind the wheel, woke going 60 straight at a brick wall, slammed the brakes, heart banging like a wrecking ball in my chest as I stared at death's face in the bricks, close enough to see that we had the same cheekbones. And now I have a God who's like a mechanic who can fix anything, so when I wanna chew somebody's head off like a saltwater taffy, or amputate my DNA, or open my wrists like windows that have been painted shut. I just put my soul into a box like a busted computer and, and haul it in. And he never asks to see my paperwork or says my warranty has expired. And I walk out feeling better, and I don't care if he doesn't exist. Well, what'd you think? McDaniel certainly packs a whole lot of stuff into that five minutes. There's a, a couple of images that I can't help but, but highlighting, partly because they resonate, partly because they make me chuckle, partly because of the way he presents them. I know that there are folks for whom this is their understanding of who God is. The first one that it, I personally can't pass up as the notion of God as, as a, a hillbilly God with a cotton candy beard and a shotgun sitting up on a cloud watching everything play out. It's humorous, but yet that, that is a predominant image that has been presented by particularly the Christian church for generations. God waiting to smite us at the moment we, we step out of, out of line. This, this white, gray-haired, bearded, tall, distinguished, kind of looking guy wearing a robe, floating around on a cloud somewhere. And then there's the, the reference to, to God being pretty nice because God's willing to be both racehorse and donkey. The thing you're going to bet everything on to win it all for you and the thing you blame everything on when things don't go your way. Racehorse, donkey. My favorite, I think, and the one that, that resonates the most deeply with me, is the God like a mechanic. 
where when things go completely wrong in life, as McDaniel talks about taking his computer and putting it in a box and dragging it in to the repair shop where no one asks to see your paperwork or what number you were or have you been there before? What's your username and password so we can check your account where you can just bring in everything that is broken? And trust that with God, you can start to put the pieces back together again until things work again, at least until the next time they break. How do you understand God? The answer to that question, whether it's, you know, hillbilly God or racehorse or donkey or mechanic or something else, will dramatically influence how you see God active in the world. I don't believe that the pandemic is brought on by God or the result of godless people. I don't think the pandemic is something to punish us or help us adjust our ways. That's not the kind of theology I have. I do think that God has been active during this pandemic tide. And I see that every time people come together in some way to support one another and to begin that experience of healing and reconciling, of love and care that's expressed and received by individuals and as communities. I see God helping people address and and adjust their perceptions, their, their lenses, the way we experience the world, the way we see things, and how we understand them. Folks acknowledging the challenges that Black, Indigenous, people of color have experienced in Canada and around the world. The challenges of our indigenous communities here in Canada, where many of them live in a place where they can't even get clean drinking water, let alone reasonable access to, to health care and education, or where they can buy fresh fruit or vegetables at a price we ourselves would pay. We've started to see the, the impacts of an over-programmed reality and the need for us to be family. However, we understand that. God is mechanic, in a way, or as technician. How do you understand God? And where have you seen God this day? Where have you seen God at work throughout the pandemic? Maybe you've been too busy to be able to notice. Maybe there's just been too much going on in your life to be able to notice. Or maybe you've had all kinds of time to notice, and your list is really, really long. Whatever it is, one thing we can be sure of, one thing that our faith is grounded on is that God is still active in the world, calling you and I into a co-creative process where together we invest in the common good and build up the kingdom of God for everyone without exceptions or limitations or preconditions. So friends, as we give thanks for what God has done, is doing, and will do, let us join together in prayer. Creator, we give thanks for the many ways that we come to know you. That there is no right way or wrong way to understand our relationship with you. We give you thanks that over and over and over again, wherever life's journey takes us, you call us into relationship. You continue to journey beside us, no matter 
what happens to us in life, no matter what we do in life. There's nothing that can separate us from your love and care and compassion for us. Help us to see you active in our lives and in the world around us. Help us to spot those moments when your holy mystery bursts forth or cracks through or seeps through the floor. Some of those might be awe-inspiring moments and others might be everyday moments, yet help us to spot them. Help us to recognize that, that you have been, still are, and will continue to be active in the creation that you looked upon and named as good. Help us to wrestle with how we understand that relationship and how it informs who we are in the world and with you. And in so doing, help us to realize that it's okay that not everyone understands you the same way we do or thinks about you using the same images or metaphors as we do or even uses the same language for you that we do. Help us to embrace that creator or God or Christ or spirit or savior or Lord or king or mother or friend or sibling or sister or brother these and all of the other ways we speak of you are okay. Because we get to choose how we are in relationship with you. And so for all the ways that you continue to shape and mold and interact with creation. We give you thanks. It's from that place of thanksgiving that we acknowledge that there are times when our desire for others to name you correctly has impacted our relationships. When our desire to be right has caused tension and frustration. That there have been moments when we have chosen being correct and having others think like us and talk like us and believe like us to be more important than the relationship. more important than embodying the gospel that you have entrusted to us. We also name that there have been times when we couldn't see what you were doing, didn't believe you had done anything, and were dumbfounded by the thought that you might do something. Help us to remember that your investment in creation isn't subject to our approval. We give you thanks for the ways that you continue to mold and shape us. And so this evening we, we pray for Folks who find themselves homeless. Folks whose only coping mechanism that seems to dull the pain and make life even approach bearable is found at the end of a needle or the bottom of a bottle. 
We pray for those wrestling with challenges related to their mental health and those who continue the journey with mental illness. We pray for those with chronic illnesses and those whose lives are dictated by whatever diagnosis they've received. We pray for all the people who find themselves in hospital, not just because of COVID-19, but for any reason. We pray for families who are called to grieve and those that have begun that journey again with grief. We pray for families divided because of their understanding of who you are. We pray for families divided for other philosophical reasons. Divided because of geography and employment, the desire for education. Help us to, brill, to build bridges of understanding and help folks feel connected and less physically isolated. We pray for families who continue to wrestle with online school, parents and caregivers that are juggling various roles, some of which seem to be in mutual competition with one another. We pray for our church, for the community that it tries to embody. We pray that we might strengthen our sense of connectedness to one another and to all those who feel part of the Trinity United family. We pray for our sibling congregations and all those who seek to engage in a ministry of justice and love and radical hospitality. We pray for our leaders at all levels of government. People who have been elected to do a job, who are held accountable for a job that they and others do, and yet don't always have the resources to deliver on the things they promised us. Help us to be compassionate and understanding with them and with ourselves. And so it is, O oh God, that we gather together tonight and we pray for CJ and Claudia N and Laura B, Donna, Aaron, Bevan, Bruce C, Gary G, Jim and Sylvia, Gordon and Mark, Brenda and Irv, Jackie H, Larry T, Catherine, Joe M, Brian, Holly and Mike, Colette, Sydney Breen. We hold in prayer the names of other people and places and events around the world. And we bring them all into relationship with you. For we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, thanks again for gathering with us here at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. Every evening at about 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we gather together to do what we just did. Spend some time in reflection, contemplation, and prayer together as a community, wherever we find ourselves situated. It's our hope that wherever you are at this moment, it's a place where you can be safe, be calm, and be community. Together, let's continue to work at investing in the common good, doing the things we need to do to keep COVID as small as possible, believing in the hope of something yet to come that will enable us to rediscover what it means 
to be a community that gathers in person. And let's gather again tomorrow night at about 8 p.m. Pacific for evening prayer.